So in this short video I'll briefly explain what theoretical sampling is and while doing so I'll also define a purposeful sampling because these are very closely connected. So first of all the rule is uh, theoretical sampling is also purposeful sampling however purposeful sampling is not always theoretical sampling so that's uh, that's a confusing statement to start with. So now let's first define purposeful sampling. Purposeful sampling is basically the sampling where you have a purpose, you, uh, you consciously make a decision as to who to recruit for your study. It's arguably one of the most popular, if not the most popular sampling method in qualitative research. So basically what this means is that you're making a judgment. If you want to explore uh, nurses' views about on a, on a certain topic, you're recruiting certain group of nurses. That's that's purposeful sampling, basically. You just you make a decision uh, based on who you believe uh, to be the most the group that will help you answer your research question. So that's not nothing really new or unusual here. So that's purposeful sampling. And now theoretical sampling is a sampling that uh, happens not not at the beginning of the study but uh, during the study after you started to do some data analysis. Theoretical sampling means that as some kind of a theory or explanation forms you're sampling, you're recruiting more people who uh, you believe uh, to be the, the most suitable people to contribute to understanding the developing, the emerging theory. So as I said, it is purposeful sampling, except that it doesn't happen at the beginning of the study. So you'll, you'll begin your study just as normal. So you'll have, let's say, uh, a group of, of nurses that you recruited through purposeful sampling. But then as you, as you analyze the data from these nurses interview, you start to believe that, let's, uh, let's say, older nurses uh, cope with stress better, if that was your study. So you're analyzing the data, you didn't intentionally uh, recruit uh, different, uh, different ages of nurses, ju just a random uh, kind of random uh, group of nurses. But then as you analyze the data, you start to suspect that, uh, that when they talk about these coping strategies, it seems that maybe older nurses have uh, are better at coping with stress so that's that's your emerging theory so in order to explore that theory you decide that maybe you'll need uh, a couple more older nurses in your study because you only have one or two uh, the majority of your participants just happen to be younger but since your theory uh, or your suspicion involves this this statement this uh, uh, this theory that older nurses may be better at coping with stress you you really need older nurses for your study. So you're recruiting more participants. You want to explore whether in fact this seems to be the case. So what you just did was employing theoretical sampling. So again, theoretical sampling is just sampling, recruiting participants who will help uh, to understand, to develop uh, your theory that's emerging from your data analysis. This is why this sampling uh, technique is so uh, common in grounded theory research, for example, because in grounded theory research, uh, the researchers generally are interested in developing a theory or a detailed explanation at least. So that's why this is what they do usually after they started uh, their data analysis. So in the process of data analysis they usually employ per, uh, theoretical sampling at some point. So that's it. I hope that uh, I managed to make this concept a little bit easier to understand now. If I did, uh, please like the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And if you require uh, more detailed, more personal assistance, feel free to explore the different services that I provide.